In this video, we're going to talk about homogeneous linear systems. So what is that? Well, we say a system of equations is homogeneous if it can be written in the form ax is equal to zero. So homogeneous because the solution set sends the vector to zero. So the trivial solution is going to be x is equal to zero. So uh, this should be pretty simple to see if we have a1 through an and we multiply it through a bunch of zeros, then our end result is going to be zero times a1 all the way up to zero times a n, and this is very clearly just zero because we're taking zero of everything. A non-trivial solution is a solution where x isn't zero everywhere. So we're saying that some combinations of the vectors a1 through a n gives us a zero result. So for instance, if we have, say, the 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, then if we multiply this by the vector 1, 1, then we're going to end up with the vector 0, 0, because we're taking one of the first column, so 1, 1, then we're adding one of the second column, which is negative 1, negative 1, so 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, so this would be a non-trivial solution. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at what this looks like. So, we say that ax is equal to zero has a non-trivial solution if the equation has at least one free variable. So, take a look at this real quick, this example I wrote here. If I change x1 and x2, and I say it's three and three, we get the same result because we take three of a1 here and three of a2 there, and then we get three minus three is zero, and three minus three is zero. So there are multiple x's, which means that there must be a free variable somewhere, because x1 can change depending on what x2 is. So what does this look like? Well, what it can look like in this case is a line through the origin. So we can say that x1 is fixed and x3 and x2 change, or perhaps it is even a plane that passes through the origin. So in this case, we have a free variable probably on the x3 axis that changes the height of it or the depth of it. So as long as there's one free variable, we will get a non-trivial solution. So let's take a look at this. Non-trivial solutions and parametric forms. So I'm going to solve this, and then I'm going to introduce you parametric form solutions. And this parametric form really helps when we deal with non-homogeneous equations, which will be next video. So let's do some simplification here. Let's do some row reduction. We're going to leave the first one the same. 4, 2, 3, 0. Let's uh, divide the second row by 3. So we're going to get 0, 1, 2, 0. And this last column, let's subtract the first. So 4 minus 4 is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. And then we get 0. So let's row reduce further. Um, 4, 2, 3, 0. 0, 1, 2, 0. The second row can be reduced to... 0, 1, 2, 0. So we can see if we take the third row and subtract the second row, we get 4, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0. Oh. And then this bottom row has four zeros. So what's our solution here? Well, we have that 4x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 0. And we really don't want this x2 in this equation. So we're going to have to do something with this. So let's very quickly take row 1 and subtract 2 of row 2. So we're going to get 4, 0, negative 1, 0. And now we should be good to take a look at parametric form. So in this case, we have 4x1. 4x1 is equal to x3 and x2 is equal to negative 2x3 
and of course we have x3 is free. So before we had a solution set that looked like that. Well, we can do a little bit better. So let's rewrite this 4x1 is equal to x3, and we can write x1 is equal to 1 fourth x3. That's better. So when we write a solution, remember we write it as a vector x, and this has x1, x2, x3 as their solution. So let's take a look. x1 is equal to 1 fourth x3, x2 is equal to negative 2 times x3, and x3 is just equal to x3. So what can we do with this? Well, we can factor out x3, because x3 is a common, uh, common constant in all of these. So we have x3, we can factor that out, and then we're left with 1 fourth, negative 2, and 1. So this is parametric form, because we have a constant t times a vector v. So instead of picking an x3 and looking at how all these numbers change, what we can do is we can pick values of x3 out here and multiply this vector by them. So if we can write a solution p, I'm sorry, write this as x, is equal to a constant times a vector, then that is called parametric form. For some reason, this pen is not cooperating. Put it down here x is equal to a constant times a vector. This is called parametric form. So we can write all homogeneous solutions as a parametric form. So let's do a practice here. Find all solutions of ax is equal to zero where a is the following. This is not an augmented matrix. This is a coefficient matrix. So we can assume that there are zero zeros at the end here, but I will not include them in this case. So what can we do here? Well, let's take the first row and subtract three of the second row to get rid of that three at the top there. So we're gonna get one, zero, negative three minus three times negative four. That's going to be negative three plus 12, which is nine. Then we have 7 minus 15, which is negative 8. And the bottom row stays the same. So here's what's interesting. We now have that x1 minus 9x3, sorry, plus 9x3 minus 8x4 is equal to 0. And we have x2 minus 4x3 plus 5x4 is equal to 0. So we now need to solve in terms of x1 and x2. So, okay, we say x1 is equal to negative 9x3 plus 8x4, and x2 is equal to 4x3 minus 5x4. So remember our solution of ax equal to zero is a vector x, so we can write this as four entries, x1, x2, x3, and x4. So let's do what we did last time. x1 is equal to negative nine x3 plus eight x4. x2 is equal to four x3 minus five x4. x3 is free, so x3 is equal to x3, and x4 is free, so x4 is equal to x4. So now we can break these up. We can say, okay, this is just negative 9x3, 4x3, x3 and zero. And this will be plus 8x4, negative 5x4, zero and x4. So now we do the same thing as before and we factor. So here we have x3 times the vector negative 9, 4, 1, 0, plus x4 times the vector 8, negative 5, 0, 1. So now we can just pick values of x3 and x4, and we can get a bunch of non-trivial solutions.
So this is the power of parametric form. And in which case, in this example, we have x is equal to t times a vector v plus s times a vector w. That's okay as well. Basically what we want is we want a linear combination of vectors. That's what we want. We want the solution to be equal to a linear combination. So that's non-homogeneous solutions, or sorry, that is homogeneous solutions. Non-homogeneous solutions is next. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If this video helped you, please share it with your friends because it will probably help them too. I will see you next time.